The Erector Spiny Plane Block is an exciting, versatile technique that has enjoyed a rapid rise to popularity. In this video, we'll discuss the anatomical basis for the block, as well as go over some of the indications, technique, and some tips for success. The Erector Spiny Muscle is actually a group of muscles that run the length of the spine from skull to pelvis. They lie just off the midline and superficial to the laminae and the transverse processes. The idea behind this block is that a needle is inserted just off the midline of the spine and advanced until it contacts the transverse process. Local anesthetic is administered and spreads along this fascial plane in a craniocaudad fashion. Now, this would only get you a block of the dorsal ramus. In other words, the paraspinal structures, the skin, muscle, and periosteum, would be well anesthetized. And this helps explain why we've seen such good results with it for spine surgery. However, it doesn't just do that. In several studies, we've seen that some of the injectate spreads to the paravertebral space, and for that reason, the ESP can be thought of as a paravertebral by proxy. There does remain some controversy about the precise mechanism of the ESP block. There are studies that fail to show paravertebral spread, and others that show the dye spreading laterally to reach the lateral cutaneous nerves, almost like a retrograde serratus plane block. Despite the mechanistic controversy, the explosion of case reports, series, and more recently comparative studies do show that the ESP works for a variety of indications. It's easy to think of the erector spinae muscle as being like a strip of meat surrounded by a sheath, like a sausage, but it's more complicated than that because the muscles that make up this group have various origins and insertions along the spine. This creates potential channels for the local to flow and indeed to access the paravertebral space. This is a volume block, and while many volumes have been used, we find that 30 mils per side of dilute local anesthetic gets you excellent spread in the thoracic region, with approximately 4 levels up and 4 levels down. In the lumbar region, where the muscle is thicker and less compliant, that 30 mils tends to get you about 4 to 5 levels total. You can always manipulate your volumes to get more or less extent of spread to suit your goals. Just be wary of your total dose of local. For erector spiny plane catheters, we'll use an automated bolus technique delivering 20 mils every 3 hours. We tend to perform this block at 3 separate levels, T5 for thoracic indications, T10 for abdominal indications, and L3 for lumbar spine surgery. Again, you can adjust this based on your specific indications, but these are good starting points. Common things that we use ESP blocks for include thoracoscopy, rib fracture analgesia, breast surgery, a variety of abdominal and pelvic procedures, and spine surgery. In the thoracic region, the transducer is placed in the parasagittal orientation well off the midline. We want to start by imaging ribs, then slide medially until we see the transition to the transverse process. Here's an image of the ribs. You can see the rounded profile with pleura clearly sliding on either side. And as you move medially, there's a distinct shift to a new structure. That's the transverse process, which is much more square in appearance, usually more superficial, and the pleura is less apparent or not seen at all. Once you have the image, a needle can be advanced from either direction. It doesn't appear to matter much which, so whatever makes the most sense for your ergonomics is best. You can use surface landmarks to estimate the T5 or T10 transverse processes, but since you have your ultrasound handy, you can slide up to the first rib, and we know it's the first rib because there are no more, and then count down until we get to the appropriate level. These blocks are simple to do in several positions, and the images are identical with the patient sitting, prone, or lateral. Okay, so here's what it looks like in the thoracic region. We see the squared off transverse process and the ES muscle just superficial to that. Depending on the level you're at, you may also see trapezius and rhomboid muscles, but these are less important to identify. The needle is approaching here from the caudad aspect and aims to contact the corner of the TP. A test injection shows the fascia of the ES muscle beginning to lift up, and now it's a matter of hydrodissecting with your injectate until you see the whole muscle lifting off the transverse process. And here's what you should be seeing at the end, a broad stripe of local anesthetic across the screen separating the TP from the muscle. For lumbar indications, we usually do the blocks at L3 or L2. Imaging L4 and 5 can be challenging due to the depth, and since the local spreads 2 plus levels down and up, it covers most indications. Here we see the much thicker ES muscle overlying the L3 transverse process. A needle is advanced in plane in order to contact the bone. 
Small test injections confirm that the local is spreading immediately superficial to the bone and underneath the muscle, at which point the local anesthetic is administered. There are several reasons that ESP has taken off and quickly become a darling of the regional world. Number one, it's an easy block to perform. You've got a bony structure as your endpoint for needle advancement, so it's almost foolproof. Compared with trying to unzipper an unforgiving tap plane, the ESP leads to far less frustration on most days. It's also easily done in several different positions and can be done safely and effectively at the end of the case prior to emergence by turning the patient on their side. This block is versatile. It can be done for indications ranging anatomically from the hip joint up to the clavicle, and the procedure is relatively unchanged all the way along the spine. It's a relatively new block, and we don't have great definitive safety data yet, and there are bound to be misadventures, but intuitively this block is relatively safe due to its shallow position. We frequently care for trauma patients with rib fractures who are on oral anticoagulants, and ESP is an easy choice compared to PVB or epidural in these cases. And finally, these have largely replaced epidural analgesia for many indications, especially in the setting of ERAS care pathways. The absence of arterial hypotension, urinary retention, and other epidural hassle factors has contributed to its popularity as an alternative. And here are some tips for ESP block. Number one, we have seen some less than impressive blocks occasionally, and it's likely on looking back that these were just intramuscular injections of the erector spinae muscle. You really must make sure that you're under that muscle, and that's the reason we advocate aiming for the corner where you can pick up the fascia with your needle. If you aim for it directly on top of the transverse process, you may find your local traveling within the muscle. If, after your first injection, the muscle seems to drift back down to its original position, that's a good thing. That's a sign you're in a true fascial plane. If the muscle appears to lift, but then doesn't move when you stop injecting, chances are you're intramuscular. Number two, use hydrolocation to ensure you know where your needle tip is. Yes, these do seem less hazardous than paravertebral blocks, but there's been more than one pneumothorax reported in the literature following ESP block, so go slow and with care. And finally, lumbar imaging can be tricky. I like to get a transverse view of the spinous process, the lamina, and the transverse process, and then make a note of the depth. Then I'll slowly turn the probe 90 degrees until I'm in the parasagittal orientation, and with my depth marking, I'm confident that the bone I'm looking at is the TP.